Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to NPTEL project on econometric modeling. So, today we will continue the time series modeling. In the last couple of lectures, we have discussed the entire framework of time series modeling, means we have discussed how it is different to cross sectional modeling and panel data modeling. And under time series modeling, we have discussed various issues, various types of time series modeling. In that too, we have discussed the volatility aspects of uh, econometric modeling. Okay, basically, time series modeling is divided into two parts, univariate time series modeling and multivariate time series modeling. And uh, again, under multivariate time series modeling, there are two different types of models we usually handle. One is called as a distributive log model, another is called as a autoregressive log models. Okay. So, there is also mechanism how to transfer the distributive log model to autoregressive log models. So, because most of the cases and most of the in uh, I mean situation in the higher levels, we will handle directly with autoregressive uh, models. So, the uh, difference between the two is that uh, in the case of distributive log models, it is the endogenous variable as a function of exogenous variables and the error terms. It means exogenous variables it with respect to its current time periods and its lag. Okay. Similarly, in the case of autoregressive lag model, so endogenous variable as a function of exogenous variable and its lag and uh, endogenous lag and error term. So, like this. So, in the case of so time series modeling basically divided into two parts, univariate time series modeling, then multivariate multivariate time series modeling. Okay. In the case of multivariate time series modeling, so we have discussed we have discussed distributive lag models and auto regressive lag or auto regressive lag models. Okay. So here is the uh, framework is like this y t equal to alpha plus beta x t plus summation beta i x t minus i i equal to 1 to n. Okay. So, this is better we call it beta 0, then this side y t equal to alpha plus beta x t plus gamma y t minus 1. For simplicity, we are just putting small uh, simple models like this or this is obviously u t or if you like so simples, then it is better to put y t equal to alpha plus beta 0 x t plus beta 1 x t minus 1 plus u t. Okay. So, this is u t minus 1, this is u t. So, this this uh, more or less same. So, there is a mechanism how you have to transfer in this particular format. So, that means, the, these two are more or less same. So, this is this is how oh, what we have already discussed in the last couple of lectures. So, the basic framework is uh, means first I will once again highlight the various forms of time series modeling. Then, we will discuss various issues and problems related to time series modeling and that to here we have to discuss two aspects of time series modeling uh, that to unit root and co integrations. So, unit root is one of the typical problems we have to understand or you have to explore in the case of time series modeling and uh, uh, on the other side co integration it is a it is a multivariate uh, framework. So, that means, uh, for co integration techniques uh, you must have at least two variables in the system while in the case of unit root there is no such conditions. So, you can start with one variable at a time. So, okay. so means in the case of unit root, the uh, objective is to know the particular features of a particular variable. So, okay. so we will discuss details once you will enter to this unit root concept. So, uh, first of all, uh, what is the uh, basic, what are the various uh, types of modeling we have to usually handle. So, I will briefly highlight all these things, then we will come down to a, a unit root test. Okay. So, uh, as I have mentioned, there is a, a, a means there, there are two divisions 
of time series modeling one is called as a univariate time series modeling another is called as a multivariate time series modeling so in the case of univariate time series modeling so we will put alpha plus beta x t beta x t plus u t okay so in the case of this is obviously u t so then u t y t equal to uh, alpha plus beta x t beta beta 0 x t okay plus summation beta i x t minus i i equal to 1 to n plus u t this is another form of the models so then another for, form of the model is alpha plus beta x t plus gamma y t minus 1 plus u t then similarly i can write like this alpha plus summation beta i x t minus i i equal to 0 to n plus uh, summation gamma i y t minus or gamma j y t minus j j equal to 1 to n plus b t ok this is another form of the model then we can also write uh, alpha plus beta beta 1 x x uh, x t uh, beta x t plus beta 2 x t squares ok x t squares plus beta 3 x t minus 1 plus beta 4 x t minus uh, t minus uh, beta for x t minus 1 whole squares ok it will continue plus b t this is another form of the models so there is another form of models called as a y t equal to alpha plus uh, beta 0 x t plus beta x beta 1 x t minus 1 plus continue plus b t and another form of the model is e, alpha plus summation beta x t minus i beta i i equal to 1 to n plus summation gamma j u t minus j j equal to 1 to n plus epsilon epsilon t ok so these are the various forms of the time series modeling so what uh, means we have to explore in various aspects in the last class we have discussed this particular model particularly this type of models that to uh, you know we have discussed autoregressives moving average ARMA autoregressive moving average, then ARIMA uh, autoregressive integrated moving average, then we have discussed ARCH models and also we have discussed GACH models, okay, autoregressive conditional heteroscedicity and autoregressive, uh, autoregressive generalized autoregressive conditional heteroscedicity. Okay, so, these are, the these are the components we have discussed in the case in the last couple of lectures. So, this is univariate time series modeling and these are all called as a multivariate time series modeling. Okay. So, that too this is this is purely distributive lag model. So, this is autoregressive autoregressive lag models, this is uh, in fact autoregressive lag models. So, this is polynomial lag models, polynomial distributive lag models, then this is infinite uh, distributive lag models and this is ARMA models. Okay. This is ARMA models. So, these are the various typical features of time series modeling. So, that means time series has a lots of uh, issues and uh, lots of concepts. So, uh, so many concepts in front of you. So, we have to handle one particular uh, problem. Okay. So, means at a particular point of time, you may go through any particular models. Okay. So, the uh, as usual the, uh, the basic framework of this particular modeling is that so, you have to fit a proper uh, uh, you know proper functional form of the models and uh, proper estimated models with respect to all these specification uh, means all these tests like you know uh, specification test, goodness fit test or DG test. So, in the means that means we have to uh, uh, every time we have to go to the uh, we have to go through the estimated parameters and the overall fitness of the models that to you know ANOVA statistic like analysis of means say like you know R square adjusted R square. So, that is mostly on analysis of variance. Okay. So, in the other sides, so we uh, we may have the diagnostic test like you know uh, root mean square error, uh, square, uh, root square errors, then you know um, mean absolute deviations, mean absolute percentage errors. So, these are the things we have to incorporate at a time in the case of time series modeling. So, these uh, means uh, 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 at a particular point of time, we are very much concerned about the estimation of a particular model. Okay? So, before estimation of a particular model, so we have to be 
very careful about so many things. The, the way when we are when we talk about the cross sectional modeling and panel data modeling that two simultaneous or structural equation modeling whatever may be the issues. So, every time so we start with the application of OLS then ultimately uh, OLS has certain assumption and subsequently once you have the estimated uh, uh, estimated model. So, then we have to go come back to again assumptions and assumptions has to be checked properly if it is okay then that model can be considered as the best uh, models and can be used for uh, forecasting or policy use provided it has gone through all these specification test, reliability test or uh, something something okay. So, that means all together. So, we need to have a good models which can be used for forecasting and policy use. So, now uh, as a result, so we are going through various uh, shapes and various structures and one of the structure here is the, the time series structures that to various forms of the models. In fact, in the in the cross sectional modeling panel data modeling, we have no such uh, speciality that is how the time series is all about to in city has a lots of uniqueness that uh, if there are various forms of the a econometric modeling we will generate or will create uh, in comparison with the cross sectional modeling and panel data modeling. So, uh, uh, since it is lag involvement, so we will create several uh, forms of the model and uh, it is very interesting, very you know more complex in fact and uh, also very justified so far as a uh, uh, forecasting and policy use is concerned. But uh, you know before you going to estimate all these uh, models any one of the models and uh, uh, for you know keeping in mind that you need estimated parameters and overall fitness of the models and all these dynamic uh, elements. So, uh, in every case so you must uh, uh, you must start with your OLS techniques, but uh, before that you have a lots of standard assumptions and uh, 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 let us assume that all these standard assumptions are also here. But here one of the more interesting point is that uh, you know uh, the stationarity issue. Okay, so the, I will come down to that stationarity issue. This stationarity issue is more or less you can say uh, unit root problem. So before you go to particular unit root problems, so I typically uh, highlight few you know features of the time series modeling. That means we like to highlight what is the problem aspects of time series modeling. In, in uh, other words, we are very much concerned what are the aspects we have to know or we have to explore in, in, in a better way or in a broad way, so that the time series speciality can be uh, recognized properly. In fact, uh, in fact uh, it, is, uh, it is somewhat different from the cross sectional modeling. The cro in the case of cross, cross sectional modeling, the shape and structure is uh, more or less very simple, so, but in the case of time series modeling, the shape and structures are somewhat very complex. Okay. So, the, uh, the various types of model will give you an indication that uh, there are uh, uh, the problems time series modeling is a complex problem and uh, it has a lots of additional features which uh, which are uh, which are not there in the case of cross sectional modelings. Okay. So, we have to be very serious. Okay. So, that means first of all what are the problems associated with the, this time series modeling. So, you you at a time you can follow any particular models. Okay. Ultimately, your main aim is to how to get the estimated parameters and uh, as a result once you means estimated models then uh, that is with respect to estimated parameters and other detailed statistics. So, that we will come to uh, come to a position to check whether this model is more reliable, more accurate, more appropriate, so that we can use for uh, forecasting. Okay. But uh, there are certain steps we have to follow before you go to estimate uh, estimating this model, means mo model selection or you can say uh, any time series modeling. So, you see here, so what are the problem basically we will uh, see. So, as we have mentioned uh, 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 previously, there is a separate lectures we have uh, gone through that is called as a identification pro identification problem. So, here also same thing. So, there is a identification problems, okay? identification problems. So, that means the prob the model may not be perfectly uh, the model may not be perfectly ok uh, or sometimes you may face problems to uh, handle or to detect whether it is a it is a distributive lag models or it is a auto regressive lag models or you can say uh, it may be ARMA models, it may be you can say uh, uh, only autoregressive models. So, so many ways you can 
find out it may be you can say uh, 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 distributive log model polynomial distributive log model so you can say infinite distributive log model so same so so many ways you have to or find out to you can say or you can uh, you can enter to any particular problems but the thing is that so that particular models uh, must be perfectly locked okay for you that is called as a mathematical perfection of the systems so if that is not the case then obviously it is called question of imperfect perfect, imperfect condition of this particular model so that is going against the system so as a result you must be very particular about this at uh, time series system. So, in this particular uh, setup, so identification of problem must be very important. Okay? So, you have to properly identify the particular shape of the model. Second, uh, lag selections. Okay? Lag selection, uh, there is a problem of lag selection because I, as I have mentioned, uh, 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 once you start with time series modeling, even if univariate say or multivariate say where there are at least two variables in the system and uh, we have to start uh, uh, integrating with it with their lags. So, now uh, you know when you have one variable then you can create 100 number of variables also or you can go for 5 number of variables. But the thing is that it, uh, it depends upon two things, first thing is you must have a enough number of sample observations and second thing you cannot choose artificially. So, there is a mechanism how to choose the lag length that means optimum lag length has to be considered that is why this is more very complex process. It is not like that you have to just uh, uh, like cross sectional modeling you have to just uh, fix the models y equal to uh, alpha plus summation beta i x i that is all the problem is just uh, uh, altogether complete and you have to just uh, get the estimated parameters and uh, other feature other statistics then you have to go to for the test. But here itself there is a additional problems that is you know choice of lag length B means once choice of lag length is fixed then you have to get the estimated parameters or other statistic then you have to go for its uh, reliability checking or that to specification check or you can say overall fitness of the models etcetera etcetera. So, lag selection is the most important criteria in the case of time series modeling which we have discussed in the last couple of lectures. Uh, lag selection basically we use three statistics uh, you can say. Akai information criteria, uh, squash information criteria, and final prediction error. Final predictions, uh, prediction errors. In fact, in fact, we have uh, uh, we have uh, uh, final predictions error. Okay. In fact, we have uh, we, we have more number of statistics which can choose the optimum lag length. But these three statistics are uh, very standard statistics, and they are frequently used in the time series modeling. So, lag selections is very important. So, we have to solve this lag selection with the help of the following statistics. Okay. Then third is the estimation problem. Third is the estimation problem. Estimation problem. So, estimation problem means you see here, uh, uh, we usually start with the OLS technique and if OLS techniques means whatever estimated results you will have with the OLS technique and that has to be gone through the you can say uh, that has to be gone through you can say uh, um, um, you can say that uh, that has to gone through overall fitness of the test etcetera. So, uh, it is very easy uh, to establish that uh, whether uh, whether this model is perfectly okay or not okay just one minute okay. So, the model estimation uh, so estimation problem is very important issue here. So, we, we must be very careful whether uh, the uh, model uh, means uh, uh, whether the technique is uh, essentially OLS technique or other techniques like GLS technique or maximum likelihood estimator etcetera. So, you must be very careful. Okay. So, the, there is a as usual estimation problem and this particular problem is also there in the case of cross sectional modeling. Okay. So, estimation problem is there again uh, in the time series modeling. Then most important thing is the stationarity problem. Okay. So, then most important thing is the stationarity problems. Okay. So, now in the case of stationarity problem, so uh, that is our main agenda in today's discussions. Uh, stationarity issue is that very simple uh, tricks, we will come down again to that particular aspects. It is better I will first highlight then we will come down to stationarity issue. Uh, fifth, then that is the called as a causality issue, causality issue. Okay, before that uh, there may be another tricks called as a co-integrations. Okay. Co-integrations, 
that means, uh, this is purely multivariate uh, framework and then causality is also multivariate framework. So, multivariate I am saying with respect to uh, 1 is to 2. So, if it is one variable in the system and if there are two variables in the system. So, one variable with its lag is not uh, we are considering here multivariate. So, multivariate means two particular independent variables then we have to play the game with with their lag involvement. Okay. So, then causality issue then finally, uh, 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 of course, there is a diagnostic test, then you know uh, uh, applications, uh, applications and then finally, forecastings, okay. then finally, forecastings. Okay. So, these are the things uh, means uh, this is as usual standard proce process of uh, any, any econometric modeling. But here, uh, means uh, here in the time series framework, so the major major things are uh, you know lag selections, rationality problem, co-integration, and causality. So that means so we have the problem of lag selections. Okay. Then second is the rationality problem, rationality problem. Then th third is the co-integration problem. Okay, then fourth is a causality problem. Okay, so now in the next couple of lectures, we have to highlight only on this particular aspects. Okay, so lag selection, in fact, we have already discussed. So our main uh, main things which are left is rationality problem, that is unity root concept, co-integration problems, and causality problem. So, we start with the first the stationarity, uh, stationarity issue. Okay. So, first of all what is stationarity? Okay. So, this stationarity otherwise called as a it is a unit root problem. Okay. It is called as a unit root problem. Okay. So, first of all what is stationary? Okay. Stationary means you see uh, there are uh, there are theoretical meaning and uh, there is also statistical meaning. So, so far as in, in this particular structure in that uh, in, in fact uh, this particular term is very valid and very applicable in the case of time series setting only. Okay. So, now uh, uh, statistically a uh, tessonarity means uh, or unit root means uh, first what is unit root? Unit root means it, it gives a signal to tessonarity issue. Okay. So, now what is mean by tessonarity? In a statistical framework tessonarity means its mean variance and covariance mean must be exactly equal to 0 constant mean we can say constant mean constant variance and constant covariance okay for instance we have a we, we have a timeline like this way okay so uh, let's say 0 to 500 so 0 to 100 0 to 200 0 to 300 like this so every time we will check uh, because it is it is in the it is in the broad game actually okay so we are collecting few samples and we are testing all these things and of, of course uh, the process of selection should be random in nature so right so now so what is the agenda here so unit root has a three aspects so that means it is a mean let's say there is a variable say xt okay so mean of uh, a mean of xt so that is called as a a error of x t must be constant. Okay, let's say mu. Okay, so then variance of x, variance of x also constant. Let's say sigma and covariance of x t then x t minus s. Let's say it should be also a constant. Okay, so provided uh, here if we, you know s equal to zero, then obviously it will come down to variance uh, variance of x. Means uh, uh, what we uh, used to do in the cross sectional setting, we put x i a x j okay where i equal to j then it will becomes variance and when i not equal to j it will be covariance so similarly here x t with x t minus n this is not a simple x it is obviously all are x t okay x t x t minus s okay so this should be uh, this should be constant okay so that means uh, uh, the time series modeling it should be a stochastic process the choice is very much uh, random in nature so randomly you will select the things then you have to find out the a mean variance uh, means a very um, theoretically or you can say very uh, the narrow levels how you have to check the tessonality etc okay so then uh, there is a statistical procedures complicated procedures through which you can easily detect the tessonality issue etc okay so now uh, what is mean ix it is simply like this way summation yt by 
t equal to 1 to n divided by you can say n, n number of total observation. This is how mean by mean uh, uh, mean of x t we can derive. Similarly, variance of x t is nothing but y t minus y t uh, y t bars whole square divided by 1 by n. Okay, so this is how variance has to be calculated. Similarly, covariance y t minus y t bars into x t minus y t minus 1 into y t minus bar uh, obviously it should be a constant. So, this is how we have to uh, we have to check the stationarity problem altogether. So, all right. So, now first of all what is the basic objective behind this stationarity a means unit root. So, now the basic objective of there are uh, two three objectives specifically for this unit root problem first first objective is to know the stationarity ok time series uh, time series all time series variable in a particular system should be stationary ok if it is not stationary generally particular or not generally particularly financial time series and variables they are non stationary in nature so, ok so that means they have uniform uniform uh, unit root problems in the initial setup but uh, whether there is a, a means a, uh, first you have a variables then your job is to check whether there is a stationarity or non stationarity but uh, most of the cases in the partic uh, particularly financial time series a, a variables you will find the variables at the original form is always unit root problems in non stationary so then you have to continuously you can say difference uh, integrate uh, till you get the variables stationary then finally the t variables which uh, which is the difference uh, difference variable should be used uh, in the final setting. So, where the, the variable is stationary in nature for instance there is a variable say x t ok. So, for instance there is a variable say x t. So, I will call delta x t I will call delta square x t I will call delta q x t. So, this is how I, I can proceed ok. So, this is this this is called as a first difference this is called as a second difference third difference. there is a method like differentiation there is a difference methods ok. So, uh, a delta x t means it is nothing but x t minus x t minus 1. So, okay, delta square x t minus x t means del upon again uh, again x t minus x t minus 1. So, okay. so, similarly del 3 means it is del upon del upon again x t minus x t minus 1. So, this is how we, we, we have to we have to be cal, uh, means you have to proceed further till you get you know uh, stationarity that means uh, most of the financial time series the variables may be no, uh, means variable uh, most probably it is a uh, unit root problem here. So, non stationary. So, when we will go for first difference then obviously the series may be stationary. So, once it is stationary then this variable particularly means the variable this is called as a uh, transformation rule ok. So, generally uh, uh, there are two two ways you have to use the data in your modeling framework. So, either original variable or you can say uh, transferred variable. So, there are many ways you can transfer the variables and one of the such one of such important transformation rule particularly for the time series setting is the uh, application of difference equations ok. So, uh, uh, we are uh, using here difference equation uh, for stationarity checking and also we have to find out the order of integration where the variable is stationarity and that order has to be used for you can say further estimation process. That is why estimation process is very complicated here in the case of time series study. Until unless you know the order of integration then obviously, it is very difficult to uh, fit a particular models uh, means particular causality models all right. So, so there are three problems first is know the stationarity, uh, stationarity that is you can say uh, stationary problems. So, uh, stationarity of the time series data. So, this is second problem is the order of integrations, order of integrations, order of integrations means like this one, this is order 1, this is order 2, this is order 3. Okay. So, that means the variable uh, the uh, means there are various uh, the uh, the uh, means interpretation is like this. So, if the variable is stationary then you can say that the variable uh, has no unit root problem and it is stationary at the label data means in the first instance you you are co uh, you are, uh, are getting the result that there is no unit root problem. So, if it is non stationary then you have to go to the first difference then you check again whether it is stationary or non stationary. If it is stationary then obviously, you have to use that particular orders for further uh, estimation uh, or further investigations or if it is again not stationary then you have to again go for another different uh, difference 
So, uh, this is how this particular term is called as a uh, small d, okay, d represents order of integration, so, okay, order of integration. Generally, so we, we uh, means most of the cases, uh, you will find the, the variable is non stationary at the level data, but when we will go for fast difference, so you will get stationary. Uh, so, uh, most of the fast difference, uh, uh, the fast difference level, so that variable is very much useful for the time series setting. Okay, so this is how the structure. And third, third thing is it will give you signal for co-integrations, co-integrations and causality because ultimately, ultimately in the time series setting, so there are three uh, altogether games. So first is unit root setup, second is co-integrations, and third is causality. So unit unit root will give you the stationarity issue. So, until unless you check the stationarity, then the variable cannot be, you cannot proceed further. So, okay, if you proceed further without checking stationarity, that is the wrong way of entering to the time series econometry modeling. So, first first entry, entry level is check the stationarity, then you enter to the second level. In the second level, so here you have to check the co-integration, that means co-integration means the existence of long run equilibrium relationship, okay. Long run, basically long run relationships, okay. So, uh, we start with the short run analysis, then we will go with the long run analysis. So, short run causality, long run causality, then finally, we will end with the direction of causality. Means here, time series, uh, time series uh, issues. So, there, if there are two variables, say, then either x influence y or y influence x. Okay. So, this is how it is called as a, there is a possibility of bidirectional causality, but in the case, uh, in the case of cross sectional settings, so we usually go for a one way causality, okay, except simultaneous uh, structural equation modeling and uh, simultaneous equation modeling. Other case, it is one way causality, that means every time there is one dependent variables and other independent variables and it is the impact through independence variable to dependent variables. But, but here, here the structure is there is if there are two variables, then there may be chance x causes y and y causes x, okay. So, that is how so, there are three different issues you will find. So, either they may not cause each other, so they may cause, uh, they may cause each other at the uh, one way, um, one way that means there is one way causality or it is called as unidirectional causality. That means if x causes y, then y does not uh, cause x. Then similarly, if y causes x, then x does not cause y. But uh, uh, then uh, if both will cause each other, then it is called as a bidirectional causality. If one cause and another is does not exist, then it is called as a unidirectional. If both will not cause each other, then it, there is a question of no causality. Okay. So, these are the, th the these are the complete game of the time series setting that to this our, our the entire setup here. So, okay. So, now uh, first of all, how to check the stationarity. So, the main M of main is M is here to check the stationarity issue here. So, okay. So, now uh, unit root test. So, first we start with checking the stationarity, then you will go for co integration, then you will go for causality. Okay. So, unit root test has a several methods. Okay. So, to check the stationarity, first uh, is called as a decupular test, augmented decupular test, they can, then Phillips Ferran test, then called as a KPSS test, then called as a ERSPO test, then it is called as a NP test. NG parent test, then DFG GLS. Okay, so that means decupular general scares uh, techniques. Okay, so there are various techniques. In fact, there are lots of research going on this particular uh, structures related to unit root co-integration and causality. So our aim is here to check the stationarity of a particular time series variable. Means how to check the stationarity of a particular time series variable. So these are the methods. Who any method you will apply, you get the stationarity uh, problems. Okay, you have to detect the stationarity whether the variable is stationary or non stationary. That means whether it has unit root problem or it has not unit root problem. So, uh, 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 some techniques are very complex, some techniques are very simple. And uh, uh, in a particular setup, if, will, uh, if you get a result in one technique, then same results you will get for, uh, uh, from the other technique also, provided there may be some uh, plus minus is there means something addition something stop succession not exactly but you will get the themes done okay 
So, uh, 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 so the structure we start with is called as a decupular test. So, what is decupular test? Because basically we will highlight these two test, test, test here, so, uh, because this is very easy to apply and easy to understand and you know very quickly you can calculate the estimate, uh, estimated value. So, far as a classroom problem is concerned, these two techniques are very useful, very handy, but in this, in this techniques uh, you need to have the use of software, so otherwise it is very difficult to handle in the classroom. So, let us say start with decupular. So, what is decupular? So, okay, so it is called as a decupular test, okay, decu and fuller at uh, uh, unit root test. Okay. So, what is this decu universe? So, it start with the, uh, uh, you know regressing like this way y t equal to alpha plus rho y t minus one, minus 1 plus u t say, okay, minus 1 less than rho less than and less than 1. Okay. So, if uh, rho equal to if if rho equal to 1 then there is a unit root problem, then there is a there is a unit root problems. Okay. So, if if rho uh, rho mod of rho less than 1 then this variable is then the variable is stationary, then the variable is stationarity. Okay. So, this is how the structure is all together. Okay. So, there are in fact, there are many versions of the decupular test, so, then finally, there is a augmented decupular test. So, that means, what, what you are saying, so in the very beginning of the time series setting, I, I, I clearly highlighted that, uh, uh, if you have a variable, then you will create additional variables, because in the time series settings, one of the interesting feature is that, the current variables depends upon its past uh, observations. Okay. So, as a result, so, uh, there is uh, another variables you have to create. So, y t, y t minus 1, y t minus 2, y t minus 3 like this way. So, this is how you have to proceed. So, that means your current variables will fall off okay? so with this past values. So, now, uh, uh, no, so if that is the structure and that, is that structure you are creating, then obviously, two major problems you have to face. So, one is mo uh, by default there will be multiple unity problem and second there will be autocorrelation problem and both are both are dangerous for the uh, you know uh, so far as the reliability checking is concerned or overall fitness of the model is concerned. That means, if the problem uh, if the estimated model has autocorrelation problem or multicollinity problem, then obviously at, at the higher level then obviously that model cannot be used for forecasting and policy use. So, that is why you must be very careful how you have to handle the situation. Uh, obviously, uh, one of the standard trick is that if you really use the transfer variable, then obviously most of the problems can be solved. It may not, uh, there may be some you know plus minus, but uh, most of the problems. Uh, for instance, if you apply fast difference, then autocorrelation problem may be solved, and in the same time, multicollinearity problem also solved. So let me give you signals uh, the, because decupular for decupular uh, unit root has a different shapes altogether to check the stationarity issue, because uh, the time series variables has a different shapes and different structures and uh, with, uh, with respect to a particular setup. So, you have to use a particular uh, particular form of the uh, techniques, so that uh, you can able to easily de de detect the uh, unit root problems or your uh, stationarity issue. Okay. So, this is simple model 1. So, in the model 2, in the model 2, so what you will do, I will put like this way, y t equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 y t minus 1 plus u t. Okay. So, this is dependent variable, this is independent variable, this is error term, this is uh, estimate parameters which you like to estimate it and this is most important, in, because the significance of this will really depends, uh, means it will give you signal whether there is unit root or not. And beta 0 is a constant, it is called as a drift. Okay it is a drift. So, uh, sometimes in the earlier case, we have not used any constant. Okay. So, now we are using the constant and in the model 3, model 3, so I will write like this way, y t equal to, y t equal to, y t equal to beta, uh, beta 0 plus beta 1 t plus beta 2 y t minus 1 plus u t. Okay. So, beta 0 is a drift here, then this is a trend this is trend, then this is a independent, independent variables. In fact, in fact, in between the model, I can write a model like this way, y t equal to simply beta 1 t plus beta 2 y t minus 1 uh, plus u t. So, that means, 
this is a when I will write you know simple models like this y t equal to rho y t minus 1 plus b t then you know this particular model has no drift and no trend this t stands for small t stands for uh, trend here so, okay. Uh, so, that means, beta 1 t, so that particular uh, uh, weightage will give you the trend factors. Okay. So, drift with the uh, uh, trend, uh, this is uh, without drift and trend, this is drift without trend, this is trend without drift and this is trend drift, trend with drift. Okay. So, this particular is called as a trend with drift. Okay. So, that means, so you may, you must have uh, your initial setup may be very stochastic in nature, but you have to come down with a very deterministic trend like this. You see, the structure will be like this way. So, all together uh, like this, uh, okay. come, this, this pictures you will find this particular shape. So, this particular structure is called as a stochastic trend, okay. so, stochastic, stochastic trends. Uh, in between, so I, I, I will give you a structures like this. Okay. I will give you a structures like this way. Okay. This particular structure is called as a deterministic trend. Of course, this is with respect to time and y t. Okay. This is with respect to time time and this. So, that means, you know, your label, uh, uh, your, uh, you know, variables uh, information in the original labels or that is what we call label data, then the shape of plotting will be like this way. Okay. So, it will be very much stochastic in nature. But when you will go for transformation, then obviously it will be coming in a deterministic forms. Okay, so this is the forms you can find out. So this is the process of integration. I mean, this will give you the process of integrations or integrated process. Or you have to, you, you, you like to know what is the order of integrations to get the deterministic trend. Okay, deterministic trend. So now, so we have the structures like this. Uh, y t equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 t plus beta 2 y t minus 1 plus u t. Okay. So, this models, this models what we will do? So, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will subtract y t minus 1 both the sides. Okay. So, equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 t plus beta 2 y t minus 1 minus y t minus 1 plus u t. Okay. So, this is I will call it delta y t. Okay. So, this is delta y t. So, beta 0 plus beta 1 t plus beta 2 uh, beta 2 minus 1 into y t minus 1 plus u t. Okay. So, this particular structure is a, 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 a decupular model. So, it is called as a decupular model. So, now I can write delta y t equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 t plus gamma y t minus 1. So, that means here null hypothesis is that gamma should equal to 0 against, against alternative hypothesis gamma should not equal to 0. So, that means gamma should be less than to 0. So, of course, you, uh, here you have to apply the t statistics to know the significance levels. So, that is nothing but gamma by gamma head by standard error of gamma heads. Okay. So, this is how you have to calculate decupular statistics. So, decupular statistic has a several versions. So, I will give you uh, means if I will summarize then there are there are specifically three different shapes. Okay. So, first shape is like this. So, it is uh, it is delta y t delta y t is equal to gamma y t minus 1 plus epsilon t. Okay, this is this is single uh, one form. So, then another is a delta y t equal to alpha 0 plus alpha 1 y t minus 1 plus epsilon t. Then delta y t can be uh, alpha 0 plus alpha 1 t plus alpha 2 y t minus 1 plus epsilon t. So, this is uh, you know uh, without drift and trend this is with drift and this is with drift and trend. Okay. So, these are the things of you can say it is called as a decupular uh, test statistics. So, decupular test uh, is generally used to test the stationarity, uh, stationarity problems or to check whether the variable is stationary in nature or not. So, now uh, in addition to decupular test there is a it's a, it means there is a advanced persons. It is actually in the name of two professors, Dickey and Pullars, okay, Dickey and W. F. Pullars, 
So, it is with respect to the uh, in response to their names. So, this statistic is called as a DF statistics. So, they have given a modified version of statistics, it is otherwise called as a ADP augmented decupular test. So, what is this augmented decupular test? So, this test will be like this. So, it is nothing but delta y t. So, delta y t is equal to is equal to alpha y t minus 1 plus extra t delta plus beta 1 or, or delta delta y t minus 1 plus beta 2 delta y t minus 2 plus continue uh, uh, sorry not delta this is beta actually uh, uh, then beta uh, beta p delta y t minus p okay plus v t okay so uh, we start with this particular uh, uh, issues but ultimately uh, okay i'll i'll better i'll i'll come down to the uh, uh, accurate for, uh, problems uh, uh, in, uh, because we have no time to come down to the original format so here the specific form of the del, uh, adp statistic is like this delta y t equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 t plus delta y t minus 1 okay plus summations gamma i y t minus i ok i equal to 1 to n plus u t ok. So, this is the typical this is the typical framework of you can say augmented decupular test ok. This is typically a uh, uh, typically the uh, framework of uh, augmented decupular test ok. It, it like you know decupular test it has a three different versions ok. So, I let me highlight the three different versions here. So, delta y t delta y t equal to uh, uh, delta uh, sorry uh, delta it, uh, yes uh, 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 let us say alpha alpha uh, ok once again I will be writing. So, delta y t equal to alpha y t minus 1 ok plus summation gamma i y t minus i i equal to 1 to n plus u t ok. So, this is uh, this is uh, you know model 1 this is in the question of model 1 then I will write delta y t equal to um, let us say mu ok plus alpha y t minus 1 plus summation gamma i y t minus i i equal to 1 to n plus u t ok. So, this is another problem forms it is called as a model 2 ok. Then I will write like this way delta y t is equal to <coughs> mu plus uh, mu plus uh, ok mu 1 plus mu 2 t ok. So, then plus uh, uh, then pl uh, plus alpha y t minus 1 plus summation gamma i y t minus i i equal to 1 to n plus u t ok this is model 3 this is model 3. So, that means like decupular test. So, we have we have three different sets of models here in the case of augmented decupular test, but only important thing we have added is uh, the, this particular portions ok. So, this is the addition or net addition to the decupular test. So, now uh, because it will give you uh, optimal framework of checking the unit root problems. So, in the first case in the first models it is it is it is it is the model with the no trend and no drift this is with drift no trend and this is with drift and trend ok. So, now in every case our standard objective is our stand uh, no no not like that way. So, this is the standard this is not uh, this is not the boundary ok. So, now uh, in in our objective is to handle this particular framework ok this particular that means alpha uh, null hypothesis is alpha such that alpha equal to 0 alpha 1 such that alpha uh, alpha uh, alternative hypothesis such that alpha not equal to 0. So, that means in this particular framework your alpha statistics should be statistically significant. If alpha statistic is statistically significant then we will say that it is stationary in nature. If alpha statistic is not significant then obviously it is called as a non-stationary problem. So, that means 
uh, if you leave, if you leave, you know further uh, uh, suppose you are not getting a, a getting you know uh, uh, a tensionality levels or order of integration at a particular level in this particular levels you are not getting the a uh, tensionality so then you will go for uh, second difference okay so then you will go for third difference so like second difference in in the case of second difference delta square e, e, o y t will be a summation like this way it will come in the case of second difference so it will come like this way uh, delta square delta squares y t is equal to uh, alpha 0 plus gamma y t minus 1 plus summation beta i ok then delta squares y t minus i uh, ok t minus i i equal to 1 to n plus u t ok so generally this is uh, this is different issue higher versions but mostly these are the three versions we, we, we may use, but uh, this is the standard tricks here. Uh, so, suppose at this particular levels you, you are not find this alpha hat is not significant, then again you have to go for first difference, second difference, uh, third difference, etcetera, etcetera. So, so the moment it will say suppose it is stationary at the level data, then you can say that the variable indication will be like this way. So, its indication will be say that uh, if it is integrated then you know say i i i 1. So, if it is integrated at the first difference level, if it is the original level then it will be integrated of 0. So, i i i integrated of order 1 means you are getting the tensionality at the first difference level. Okay. So, similarly uh, suppose at the second difference level, so it will be integrated of order 2 like this way. So, uh, if d, uh, d is the order of integration, then obviously the variable will be stationary at the i uh, upon d. Okay. So, that is how the order of integration can be detected. So, similarly, similarly you have to apply in different uh, aspects uh, to check the stationarity issue. Uh, so, uh, so, means like you know in the case of KPSS, then uh, Phillips Perron test, then you know NG test, etcetera. Uh, ng parent test. So, uh, uh, because of lack of time, it is not possible to go through each and every techniques to check the tensionality issue, but most of the generalized and standardized uh, particular variable is the augmented decupular test. Okay. So, in fact, in fact, it is more advanced is uh, sometimes you can check the structural break also in this uh, with the help of this uh, augmented decupular test. So, like just in that case, you can write like this way alpha 0 plus uh, alpha 1 d 1 plus alpha 2 d 2 plus uh, gamma y t minus 1 plus summation beta i a delta y t minus i i equal to 1 to n plus you can say u t. So, d 1 d 2 are the seasonal components, it will give you the breaks whether uh, uh, wh uh, sometimes you know uh, the issue is uh, why the variable is not stationary. So, there may be some structural break is there. So, if you detect the structural break, then obviously you can get to know the complete picture of tensionality. Otherwise, it is very difficult to find out the tensionality issue. Anyway, in a, a, a whatever may be the situations, uh, so one of the standard problem in the time series modeling is unit root test. So, that is that is to check the tensionality issue and that is very useful for co integration and casualty test. So, uh, uh, so before you going for co-integration and casualty, these are the main objective of a particular time series modeling. So, you must know the tensionality levels means order of integration where the variable will be tensionary. Uh, so, there are uh, various techniques available to check the tensionality issue. So, that to unit root problems. So, uh, we start with the decupular test, then augmented decupular test. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, the, then Phillips Perron test, NG test, etcetera. So many test, test, tests are there. What we have already highlighted, but basically uh, we have uh, briefly discussed the details about decupular test and augmented decupular test. Decupular test is the easiest methods, uh, very simple to understand, very simple to calculate, and its modified version is called as a augmented decupular test. So, that is what you know just you know giving the uh, optimum lag length structures and degrees of freedom adjustment. So, uh, uh, so, that means that is how augmented decupular test is much 
advanced and you know more interesting more reliable than the dicky fuller test so most of the problems so you can use augmented dicky fuller test to check the tensionality issue of a particular time series variables okay so now so similarly other techniques with you know so many uh, constraints or you know conditions you can apply sometimes you know uh, more like you know ng parent test can be applicable in a more advanced way sometimes phillips parent test can be applicable in uh, various ways so we are not concerned about all these things but ultimately our main agenda is to check the tensionality issue so whatever techniques you are applying so ultimately end result is you, you have to know whether the variables are tensionary in nature or not not or means having unit root problems or not unit root problem. If it is unit root problem, then at what levels or at the what at what order of integrations you will get the tensionality, and that order will be used further for co-integration and causality. Okay, so we will discuss detail about this co-integration causality uh, in the next class. So for this, in the time being, so we can close this uh, class. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.